Water. It's an important resource in California, but it's especially important for residents in Southern California. Hi, I'm State Senator Ed Hernandez. The reality of water in California is that most of the state's precipitation falls in the northern part of the state and in the Sierra Nevada mountains. But the majority of farms and people are in the central and southern part of the state. These facts have enormous implications. Along with my work in the Senate, I'm bringing you a few short videos to get you up to speed on what you should know about water. In the first episode of San Gabriel Valley WaterWise, I'll show you where our area's water comes from, then we'll talk about the threats to our water supply that should have all of us concerned. My name is Shane Chapman. I'm the general manager for the Upper San Gabriel Valley Municipal Water District. Since 1960, the Upper District, along with several other agencies and water utilities, has provided a reliable, high quality, and affordable uh, water supply. When it comes to managing water in the San Gabriel Valley, the conversation starts and ends with what's below our feet, a giant geologic bowl capable of holding an extraordinary amount of water. It's easiest to think of the basin as a large bowl. The sides of the bowl and the bottom of the bowl are defined by solid rock that's deep beneath our feet. Inside of that bowl, there's gravel, sand, and in between all those small pieces of gravel, sand, the rock, is water. The area that it underlies basically runs from the mountains directly behind me, the San Gabriel Mountains, southward down to about the 60 freeway. And it runs westward from about the city of Glendora all the way over to the city of South Pasadena. But we have to keep in mind that there's a finite supply from the basin, and we rely on that water to provide a fresh water drinking supply to all the res residents of the San Gabriel Valley. Right below us is 90% of the water that's supplied to the San Gabriel Valley, and right. it's very important, and you are mentioning also that the source is from rain, snowpack, the runoff, literally right down the, right from the, mountains. the mountains that they come here. Is there ever an instance, obviously it's dry, we're in the bed, there's nothing here, and is there ever an instance where we don't have enough rainfall, enough water, that the water below us is at risk and not be able to provide our residents? Yeah, we commonly go through prolonged dry periods. Uh, the last two winters, including this winter, are perfect examples of this. Rainfall just this year has only been about 40% of average. Okay. So we're seeing the basin levels drop. There's enough water in storage currently to tide us through this but we always have to be mindful of how much water we're extracting from this groundwater basin beneath our feet and that we put back what we take out right. such a, so that it's a sustainable supply. We get our water obviously from the ground below us right. and from Northern California. What are some of the risks to the community in the San Gabriel Valley if those sources and if those water sources aren't available? Well, of, of those two main sources you named, the water from Northern California that's imported and the local water that comes from the mountains and the, the uh, local rainfall, the risks are earthquakes, prolonged drought, um, pumping restrictions on the imported water because of endangered species issues in the Bay Delta okay. sensitive ecosystem. And here locally, the rainfall on the snowpack we depend on is highly variable. So we have to take all that into account as we manage the local water supplies and make sure we preserve enough water in this groundwater basin that's below our feet in order to carry us through those times, those long dry periods as an example. So when you're saying earthquake, I'm assuming earthquake in Northern California, if the levee should break and therefore that water is not gonna be accessible here to Southern California, or is there an example where if there's an earthquake here that could cause you know, damage here exactly. to our infrastructure? Yeah. Major earthquakes are a, a critical concern. Obviously California has a very serious seismic mm. risk associated with it. Okay. And here in this basin, in the San Gabriel Valley, we're plumbed into the entire state, all the way up as far as okay. San Francisco where we get our water. Okay. And all along that string of infrastructure we depend on, there's several earthquake faults, including the San Andreas. And that runs right through some of the facilities that delivers that water to us, as well as through the Bay Delta area. The work that Shane and his colleagues will be embarking on over the next few years will be critical to our future water supply. But it's going to take a team approach. 
change needs to happen at the government level in Sacramento and in the way we use water at home. In the coming episodes, we'll bring you the story of how the San Gabriel Basin became polluted, and we'll show you how cutting edge technology is being used to address the problem. I want to thank Upper San Gabriel Valley Municipal Water District and especially Shane Chapman. The San Gabriel Basin is crucial to the future of our community, but the fact is, it's in danger and we need to take action to protect it before it's too late. To learn more, visit sen.ca.gov Hernandez. I'm Senator Ed Hernandez, and thanks for watching.